conversation that we will have tonight advance the church of God. Let this teaching, O God, provide intelligence for how we should conduct our affairs. Let it propel someone to the next level of the relationships of their life. I ask, Lord, that whatever kind of power in the way of someone here, that such power be arrested and broken in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray, Lord, that everyone here will move to the next level altogether. Amen. That life will become richer for everyone. Amen. Let your name be glorified. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Alright, let's take our seats in God's presence. God bless you. Good evening, everybody. Alright, today is the 23rd of um, February 2022 and um, I'm hoping that we are gradually coming to the closure of our conversation concerning social capital and lasting relationships. Let me start by asking how has it been, this conversation? Have you found it useful? Amen. <laughs> I see the smile on your face suggesting that without a say. But seriously, I want us to do a little review one more time today. You know, it's not just good to be loading, loading, loading. We need to check how well we are doing and then we advance the conversation. So how has it been? Any questions? I have questions for you if you don't have questions for me. Any questions? Have you found the conversation useful? What have you noticed? started in what areas have it has it been most useful sorry in what areas has it been most useful you know um so yeah let's take questions comments contributions i have something i want us to cover tonight but just in the same spirit of last week i felt that we should just do some review so let's just do a little review what have we learned again we spoke to some things last sunday and tonight I will be speaking again about things. But you know, I don't just want you to be just learning, learning, learning. When learning is just, I'm not here to just show you knowledge. I want us to find it applicable, you know. And so I want to stop today to just ask before I teach any further. So any questions? Did you find any challenge? By now you should have been noticing what area, what kind of social capital are you missing as a person? Abi? Yes now. By now, you should be studying what areas of your life need certain areas that you don't have. You know? What kind of thing have you noticed about yourself? What are the things that you know that you have needed, but you realized you did not have from your childhood or as you were growing up? Be it spiritual, be it mental, whatever thing it is. Any, any, anybody with any contribution? I have questions in case... You don't have questions. I have questions I've written out. So does anybody have any question? Anybody? Any contribution? Any question? Mama, you want to say something? Mama wants to say something. Can we get the microphone? Brother David, please be on my side tonight. Eh? Can you get the microphone and help me bring it? It's here, the microphone. Eh? Brother David, come and walk with me. Let's preach together. All right? My blood, Brother David. Oh, yeah? Okay, Mama. Ah, but you were doing like you wanted to say something now. <laughs> Mama, serious. I thought you wanted us to talk first or how? Okay. All right. Any questions? Any contributions? In, if there is none, I'll just go straight. Eh? Okay, contribution. All right, quick one. Just sharp, sharp. Yeah. Hallelujah. Praise so, um, you, you mentioned something last week, Wednesday, and it's about... Okay. Um, you not closing the doors on people. Yes. So, I, I, I've always been of the opinion that there are some certain people that you should not have things to do with. You know, so the balance that you put in is there is that, yes, it's okay not to talk to the person. Yes. Don't be the one to talk. Since you don't want to talk, don't, don't talk. talk. Yes. Since you don't want to have a relationship or a continuous conversation, don't. But don't be the one to close it. I have, in time past, close on relationship because of anger yes so when you now mentioned it made me realize that i might probably do myself a disservice yes by 
doing that. Yes. So I took that lesson in and I started reflecting on the things that I have done. And I don't think I would do such things again because I, I acted out of serious anger. Yes. Because I knew that if I had probably taken my time after that time, I wouldn't have probably cut off that relationship. Yes. So when you now said that we should we ensure that we are not the ones closing yes. the door, then it made it made a lot, a lot of sense to me to something that you pointed out in COVID. There was there was something that you mentioned during immediately after COVID when we started having um, Sunday services. There was something you mentioned about this same thing. And now so the thing when, after you said it, I now remember I flashed back to that that time and what you said currently now so it made a lot a lot of sense with me and i think okay. i'll be able to do things better going forward thank you sir thank you very much sir. can we appreciate that contribution please amen can we do that better please yes amen thank you very much for that yes it's very true i'm not saying that you should not leave some relationships i'm saying don't be the one to slam the door get out if i see again you know no you don't want to talk Prove it. Don't talk. There's no, there's no need to talk that you don't want to talk. <laughs> you don't want to talk. There's no need to be saying, I will talk with you again. Don't talk. That's the solution. Yeah, any other one? Does anybody? Okay, so let me take it out. If you have, you would have raised up your hand. Let's make some progress. But I have a few questions for us. And I want to ask you a question. Praise the Lord. There is a case of a sister who now knows that it is the deficiency of her background affecting how she has been responding to brothers who have been coming to ask her out. So brothers have been asking her out, but she's been turning them down with the claims that the brothers need to be of a certain ideal and she has now realized that really and truly somewhere in her heart it is fear making her turn everybody down fear of not being good enough hello you know it's very possible and likely yeah what would you advise the sister to do now that we have known that the problem is a level of insecurity in her relationship life. Anybody? So, now we know that it is insecurity or fear or some kind of damaged story making her behave the way she's behaving. What would you advise her to do? What would be your advice now that we know the problem? That she's, her background had made her become you know, of a certain orientation. I, I, yes, Mama. Yeah. Can we give Mama a round of applause, please? Yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Good evening, church. Good evening, Mama. Uh, scripture says, um, perfect love casts out fear. Perfect love casts out fear. Praise so God. So, she needs to see herself in the life, light of how God sees her, that God loves her. She needs to accept God's love and, um, see that she's loved Amen. and um, she'll be able to accept who she who Christ has made her to be and um, see herself in the reflection or in the image of God that will reduce or totally eradicate the issue of you know um, doubts that she has in her mind and um, the lack of confidence that she might have in herself that is affecting the people that are coming towards her. Yes. So if she sees herself in the light of who God sees her to be, she would carry herself in that way. Mm. And um, with her, uh, her head held high and her shoulders squared, she would not be intimidated or feel less of who she, are, uh, who she is. Pardon me. Who she is in Christ Jesus. So instead of feeling like, oh, I, I'm not equal to this person. I'm not a match to this person. If I'm not she good sees enough. Herself in the, you said something that if you love yourself enough, you will work on yourself. That's right. You would improve on yourself. That's you right. would be better off than what you were yesterday. You That's would right. Cont so it's a continuous um, improvement on yourself. That's so whenever people meet you, come 
in, in, in contact with you, they see a better version of who you are. So you are not giving them less of what you are. You are giving them who you are in Christ Jesus. So when people see you, they see Christ through you. Thank Amen. you very much, Mark. I want to give that a round of applause. Beautiful. One more question, and then I will proceed in my notes. A blogger is writing regularly. What is he trying to achieve, consciously or unconsciously? Someone is writing or posting his picture on Instagram. What is he doing from your understanding of social capital? <laughs> if you don't understand, even the question you don't understand, how would you understand? Okay, Mama, yeah. Environment. So if he's writing about other people, yes. probably he's less of who he is and trying to be so that he becomes better or just uh, be good on it. You know, there's something in the mission state and there's another part of that. If you don't celebrate greatness in order, obviously there's no greatness in the world. That's right. Whatever. But if he's writing about himself, he's probably thinking that he sees himself in that light and he wants people to see in that light also. Wow, my mind is on flip. Do you understand what she responded to? Okay, do you understand the question now? So I'm saying someone is writing an article every week. Whether, okay, so let me, Mama gave us a variant to what I was saying that the person is talking about other people and is maybe casting this in other people like somebody's talking about pastors pastors you know and he's writing in regularly what is he trying to do that regular content boom 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 let's even assume he's not even talking about people that content provision what do you think he's trying to do brand eh? brand perception okay you want to say something let me give you a microphone. I think he's positioning himself. He's positioning himself in a way that he wants people to see him, just as Mama said. And, you know, there's something that consistency does. Consistency helps you, helps you put your face in the, helps you put your face in the face of people. Put what you are saying in the face of people. And then people will know you for that particular thing. So it's either you are being inspired and you want to inspire people. People will see you as someone who wants to inspire people. Or if you are someone who likes to diss people and you are consistently posting, you are obviously putting yourself, yourself in the position of people as somebody who criticizes people. So in everything, I would say he's positioning himself to make people see him the way he wants them to see him. Thank you very much. So what I'm going to do now, thank you, let me just go straight into my notes. What I'm going to do right now, starting from the next couple of minutes as I finish saying what I'm about to say, I'm going to put closure to the subject of social capital and I will speak to the last two things I said on Sunday, which is acceptance. Do you remember I said something about acceptance and sexual preferences? I will talk about that. I will quickly touch on reasons why relationships don't last and then I will speak about five five laws of influence i promised you that you remember i said so i will talk about five laws of influence shall we pray father thank you for this articulation one more time in jesus name we pray amen, amen. all right i want us to look at a few things today and on sunday because this is a continuum and probably are joining us online or you are here on site to understand that there's such a thing called acceptance the law of acceptance 
I personally will call it the beginning of progress. You cannot make sufficient progress in your life if you don't first of all accept who you are, where you are, for what you are. So there is something about accepting. For example, we speak, we speak or spoke about the deficiencies of our lives. No one person can say he is the SI unit of a human being. Even Jesus Christ modeled after the order of the word of God and left us patterns we should follow from just what his life looked like. So there is something about accepting. Jesus was born in a manger. Do you know he had to accept that? He had to accept he doesn't have a place to hide his head. He had to accept who he is. And I'm simply saying, for you to be able to add any other meaningful value to your life, you need to accept who you are. You need to accept who you are. You cannot change what you have until you accept what it is. So I'm simply saying your life will begin to count. And no matter the background, as we may have observed in this teaching, how important it is, what your parents do not do, it doesn't matter. What is important, that's why you see somebody come from the jungle and when he gets to America, he's living a posh life. He has accepted, look, my father did not do this, me, I will do this. You need to accept, and this is so important. The reason I'm saying accept, and I, I, I told us to go and watch a film. Did you watch the film? Some of us, you will still not obey God, even if it's a film, I say you should watch. I didn't say you should fast too. You fast, you are struggling. Watch film, you still have not watched. Don't worry, you tell me about your spirit of obedience. Watch film, film, film. You will not watch again. Did you watch the film? God bless you. You watched it? Fantastic. The lady was, you know, conjuring to herself that, look, this is who I am. My father is a royal person somewhere. Has certain money somewhere. And I'm not going to agree. They caught her like this. She still argued. Say, my father is a. My father will send me money. My, that is self-deception. It can make you begin to act like you are abnormal. In fact, you begin to lie. I know some Christians can begin to sound like they are trusting God as their heavenly Father to produce or provide something for them that is not real. It's not real. So I'm saying, accept where you are. For example, let me use an illustration. You want to do something big in the space of industry. And maybe you did not go to a formal school. And you now notice that that lack of going for that education makes you feel small in a community. And so whenever anybody wants to talk about you're not going to school, you react. It looks like a wound you don't want anybody to touch. Nobody by school, Joe. You see, you have to accept that there's something about schooling that you are missing. <laughs> do you understand? It's not by saying, not by school, job. Oh, God, there's something about school that if you had, you may not talk like this. Yes, sir. Uh -huh. So, don't just, you know, babuzo us. That's why I was saying, don't cover low self-esteem with spirituality. Yes, don't cover, you know, certain things that are real. You did not have formal education. You did not have a university degree. You did not, those type of things. You've never traveled out of Nigeria. Nobody has said yes to you. Those type of things can make you feel small one way or the other. I, I get what I'm saying here. That somehow in your mind, you may be thinking that if you had it otherwise, it may have influenced your success. Maybe, for example, your parents did not stay with you. Or you did not stay with your parents, whichever is proper. proper. You know, and then you find out that you, are, you begin to feel like as if it doesn't matter with who I stay with. I'm telling you, if you stay with your parents as a woman or as a man, there's a difference it will make on you and in your life as you grow up. Different from if you did not stay with your parents. There are abnormalities in your life. And I don't want you to just wash them away and wish them away and just say, it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter. Don't use gra gra. Confuse what is important. Please, do you understand what I'm saying here? <laughs> For example, again, you are born into a polygamous family. Don't tell me it doesn't matter where I was born. You need to work on that mindset. I know you can succeed even if it is polygamy or whatever. But I'm saying, work on that. Don't say it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It matter. 
the life you would have lived if you were just from a father and a mother normally is different from the life you've lived in reality so deal with that conversation you were growing up nobody ever hugged you you know like i was talking about peck peck is not common in some homes so peck for what who is pecking who why what are people doing <laughs> let alone kiss is forbidden do you understand what i say here imagine you never knowing what it feels like to have your own corner in your room as a green child you had your corner the way you would think is different from how you grow if you were just hey, hey, anywhere but left face do you know what i'm saying do you know what i'm talking about if they served you with your own tray water and cup is different from when you eat together and you're competing for meat I'm trying to use yes, sir. Yes, sir. Do you I'm trying to use real examples to come home to my point. So don't just wish away the point. Fix that mentality. And God has given us the power of the mind to be able to address those things through the word of God and the spirit of God. So there's something I'm saying about accepting. And I was saying about looking in the mirror and saying to the mirror, I will do well. You know, I said something about that on Sunday. That no matter where you are, look in the mirror and tell yourself you are a success. God called himself I am. It's for a reason. He can be whatever he has to be. And I'm saying you too need to call yourself I am. Praise the Lord. Amen. Remember I told you that if you don't say I am, nobody will say thou art. Say that after me. If you don't say I am, nobody will say thou art. If you don't say I am, nobody will say thou art. If I don't say I am Alexander, Nobody will say, thou art Alexander. If you don't say, I am handsome, nobody will say, thou art handsome. If you don't say, I am rich, nobody will say, you know, do you understand what you say here? So after you have accepted it, the Bible says, for we know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ towards us, in that he was rich, yet for our sakes he became poor, that through his poverty we might become rich. So we agree that we were poor, but through his own poverty we can now become rich. So we are not going to end with acceptance. We are going to continue with redefinition. So you are going to not just accept, you redefine. Praise the Lord. So you redefine. And that's what I want to speak to about how that, though you may have come from a small background, the Bible says, though your beginning be small, your latter end shall increase. I know your end will increase, but accept that your beginning was small so that your latter end can increase. And don't stay small. So that's why I said accept and then redefine and towards sexual preference i said to us it is important that god will give you relationships friendships that you should keep in your life and i'm of the opinion that from this teaching one of the things you should have taken in is to start to look for a friend worthy being called your friend who can you refer to as your friend who is your friend who are your friends do you have a friend if God said, I want to bless you with somebody else today, who will go with you? Some of us, our spouses should be our friends. Is she your friend? You know, and I was saying on Sunday, how that friendship is so important that the only major thing that would divide your best friend from your wife should be intimacy sexually. That's true. There are many people you can love, only one person you can marry. So there are many people that can be very nice, many people are lovable. Don't tell me it's only one person you must, that you can love. There are many people you can love on earth. Praise the Lord. Come on, am I saying praise the Lord here? Yeah. Yes. So don't tell us it's only one person. No. Marriage was created by God, but designed for men. Uh, so it's, it's as we wish. So a man can marry more than one wife and still be happy. If he knows how to manage the design. <laughs> but it can't be a priest in God's house. Praise God. Uh -huh. So you just know that day, that one, that you have forfeited eternal benefits of serving in God's house. So I'm saying you need to have a clear picture of your sexual preferences. Now, I want to say something in that statement, and then I will lead to the next point of lasting relationships, and then I will go to five laws. That most people don't understand the other gender while growing up. And I'm praying that in this conversation as we finish towards Sunday, 
that you will understand the power of the other gender. And I was saying that masculinity is one of the greatest gifts you can give the femininity. And I'm simply saying by that statement that a man should learn or a woman should learn early the power of the other gender on himself. What am I trying to say? One of the greatest things you will meet as a casualty in your journey of life or as a challenge, not casualty, is the temptation to fall for the other sex. It's one of the greatest challenges. Am I making some sense here? In fact, I almost can say, I just don't want to say it too absolutely, that a greater challenge we face, or that most of us are facing, like I used to say, is no longer stealing. It's fornication. When last were you tempted to steal? It's not likely. But when last were you tempted to fornicate? It's very likely. Do you understand what I'm trying to say here? Yeah. Don't, don't, and, and the temptation is part of life. You know, I told you about some things about life. You are liking someone. It's not the devil all the time. It's part of life. If you give attention to anything, you will re receive affection. Understand that some things will follow. It's not the devil that tempted you from the beginning. If you keep seeing that sister alone, you will soon start to like her alone. It's life. That's not yet Satan. Praise the Lord. You know, I spoke about life and godliness. Some things are consistent with life. Now, what am I trying to say? That part of life should be that you should understand how to deal with the opposite sex. Now, I don't know whether I can take the liberty tonight to share something from my heart. I have used that illustration a few times, but I've seen it also in a few other events of life that I feel is worth addressing or speaking to. I just want to speak to it. That is the fact that I have seen men who, under the influence of certain women, not been able to resist the alluring or the allurement of that woman, the seduction, I mean, by alluring, of that other woman, and so they fall a victim of that woman's seduction. Do you understand what I'm trying to say here? Yeah. So that Potiphar's wife's case was such that it was a natural giving that Joseph should have fallen. It was a natural giving that Joseph should, in fact, brotherhood, if we'll be honest, if he fell, we will understand. Hello? Uh -uh. Even sisterhood will understand. Hello? Am I, come, the only people are looking at oh, I'm very serious. Can we talk? I, don't, I would just change my mind. I'll keep everything in my chest, too. That's what is talking People like to form things that, let's, can we talk and respond well? Otherwise, everything will go back inside bag. The way we are looking. That's why pastors don't need to talk. Because they are not sure if they will believe that they are still saints. <laughs> Me, I will take my own. If you like to do it. So, what am I trying to say? That it's a natural giving that men just have tried. But you see, it's not just because it's a natural giving. You have to have trained yourself in the art of understanding the opposite gender. And I know you may not have fallen for Potiphar's wife, but there's another woman who is your spec that we meet. Maybe Potiphar's wife was not something that you could, that you, it was something easy for you to manage over. But you will meet one that will meet your spec that is on point. There are some people that they are not, it's not the physiological that will appeal to you, it's the intellectual. Can we just talk? Yes, sir. You will just enjoy talking with the person. But inside your mind, the intimacy is deeper than sex. Are you getting what I'm saying? So I'm saying you need to master the art of the opposite gender. You might be thanking God, and this is where I'm going to. You might be thanking God for the avoidance. You see, risk can be managed in different ways. Risks can be avoided. By way of saying avoid means that you didn't even expose yourself to that chance then risk can be managed part of managing risk is to transfer it hello part of managing risk is to control it so there's avoidance there's control there's transfer there's management what am i trying to say every risk your life, you will meet risk. Life is a risk itself. You have the chance of your boss liking you. You went for that interview. It's no fault of yours, but you are the boss's spec. What do you do? 
you and a colleague had to work together on a project that will stay three weeks on somewhere that is not with your spouse. What do you do? These are realities. And I'm simply saying you must have solved that question long before the opportunity comes to be able to manage that opportunity without falling. Do you understand what I'm saying? So I'm saying understand your sexual preferences and don't run away from them. Know what you like. Some men will agree with me that you can stand before some naked woman and not move because she's nothing to you. But there are some. You must not see their teeth. It's a problem. <laughs> Hello. And it's not only for men, even for women too. There are some women, they must not just find someone who is eloquent. They are gone. They are gone. They are mercilessly gone. Some others, it must not be Teddy. Once he has Teddy, they are dead. <laughs> dead. I'm serious. They are dead. Sir. Are you getting what I'm saying here? Some others, you will not believe it. Most others is Malachi. You must not just dangle Malachi like this. They say to where? Kill me. <laughs> <laughs> do you understand what I'm saying here? Yeah? And you must understand this trick. See, let me say this also. Part of understanding the opposite gender, which I will stop here. I remember when I was in, you know, serving in the army then, in Ibadan, there was this sister, when I just got there, that from my zeal, my, I've always been on fire for God, praise God. So those days, maybe when go, go during break, take meat pie and, you know, um, Fanta, you know those type of quickly, uh, this sister just noticed that I was speaking in tongues. It was spirituality that she liked. That this one can like God. Ah. Did I ever tell you the story of that campus? Did I ever tell you about You know some people can smell destiny. Uh, they would just smell from afar. Did I tell you the story? That I think the audience has changed. Mr. Tunney might know this. That I carried my box and I was running out of the place. I didn't tell you the video. Uh, don't worry. I think the audience has changed. Some audience used to know this before. I carried my box and ran away. Spirituality was what she was liking. That you can be spiritual. And she wanted us to lay together. Spirituality, oh. So don't think that it's because you are all bad boy, just drink water, drop cup person. It's not, it's, it's not every time. Hello, are we together inside this? These people used to do some. Kill it, you know. So, are we together tonight, please? What I'm therefore saying to us is this. Know your sexual preference and don't pretend. Know it. When you are seeing the sister that you know you are vulnerable to, stop pretending that there's nothing there. There's everything there is a matter of time. Can I hear your amen? Yeah. So stay accountable is one of the best ways to stay faithful. Accountability is one of the key guides to faithfulness. Who can you report yourself to? Who can you say, hey, this is what's going on with me. Who can I tell? Accountability always helps. If there's nobody to ask you questions, you have somebody that you can tell answers. That we don't need to come and be investigating. I have someone who can say, man, I'm what this sister is causing problem in my flow. In fact, there should be a brotherhood. When they see you around that sister, they should know that, ah, that's your body. That's not good for your destiny. Do you understand what I'm trying to say here? Sister, there should be a friend sister or even a pastor or a friend or someone you trust that sees you around that brother and knows that, oh, man, this thing is not healthy for the future. Yeah. I know some people can control it. Like me and I can stay with men. I can stay with I don't. I'm not arguing. No. I'm just saying you have not met the one that you are vulnerable to. When you meet, not just Abba. Do you know what I'm saying here? Yeah? He said, no, 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 I don't have anything. When you meet the person you are vulnerable to, you will think they put jazz inside your head. Ah! You know women's zone is worse. 
What runs in women is different from what runs in men. I'm not yet to begin to defend that. So, I hope I've been able to speak a little to acceptance, sexual preferences, lasting relationships. Now, let me just quickly say that, then I'll go to five laws of that relationships in your life were ordained for a reason, for a season, or for a lifetime. I've said that a few times, enough for you to remember. So you watch out for it. And I said, try not to be the one to snap relationships off. I will never do anything with you again. It's not necessary. If you know you don't want to do anything, don't do, rather than be saying it. Do you understand what I'm saying? Uh -huh. So what I'm just simply saying is, respect the relationships God brings to your life as neutral. The relationships are not good or bad. It's what you make of them that will matter. So let's assume there's one bad guy that comes. Then you say, then you now tell him, ah, no, I don't talk to such people. What are we doing together? No, no, no. Your attitude should be high. Champion, sir. You know, and he does all that. The guy is a bad guy. Do you know what I mean by bad guy, for example? But someday you are at the bus stop and somebody wants to rush you or will lay you. And it's this Baba Amin guy that shows up. Ah, whoa, feel up, feel it. You know, let's assume the guy that wants to attack you, his name is Philo. Philo, Abo Mojuni. He's putting in his capital for you. Yes, sir. God planted that guy that day for the day of evil. I will never do anything with you. The day you will need him, you will know that it was for a reason you met him. Do you understand what I'm to say here? So don't be quick. I've seen this a few times in my life. Don't be quick to say, I will never do any ogre. I've done it before and I've regretted it. Now I'm telling you, I will not do it again. It is wiser just to let it go than be shouting. Do you, do you understand what I'm saying? Just let it go. Just let just go and keep quiet. But most times, those relationships come back being quickly. I have about five reasons here. I gave some on Sunday, but I want to add some more to it. Why relationships don't last? Why relationships don't last? And this is true. Some relationships were meant to last longer than they have lasted. Number one is because there was no purpose to the relationship. Purpose almost always gives longevity to every relationship. Did you hear what I just said? Purpose almost always gives longevity to every relationship. When there is a reason why we are seen, then we can see longer than just ordinary. I hope you understand what I'm saying. Yes, you say, I'm just going to that sister's house. I'm not, what is the objective? What is the objective? Do you get my point? Yeah, purpose almost always. If there are people you may meet in your life, not all of them will be for marriage. For example, you are seeing a sister or you are seeing some guy. At some point, you want to ask questions and say, hey, what are we doing? Do you understand? What are we doing? There was a lady that was almost always trying to get my attention some years back. You know, mama was out of the country then. Uh, almost every time, she just called me. Sir, Bishop, are you available, sir? Okay. Okay. You know that kind of... At one day, you know me, I called, I said, hey, sister, what exactly do you want from me? You are not my member of my church. You are not, and I will, you know I will ask you, I mean, I will say, my, there's nothing you will go say, I will, there's nothing you want to do to me. You are not a member of our church. You are not my daughter. You are not my partner. You have to belong somewhere. You have to belong somewhere. I can't just continue to be seeing you at your call. I'm not available like that. You think I'm that available? So, it's interesting. That same lady, the day I decided not to talk to her again, I didn't call her and say, don't talk to me again. I just decided. It's my decision. Till tomorrow, she's wondering what happened. I caught it. Wait, inside my chest too. Max. When she's ready, if you call me, hey, how are you? I'm not the one that said, don't see me. Do you understand what I'm saying? Just define it. And that's the thing about strong-minded people. Someone like me, I might not decide on time. If I decide, oh, you, you think I never noticed you. <laughs> that's very, very bad. Though. You will never believe that I once spoke to you. <laughs> I'm telling you. <laughs> it will look like, did we ever really, do we even have your number? For, you know, there's not that I was gaining. I know what I'm doing. So I'm simply saying one of the reasons why relationships 
Okay, you guys, are you aware of what's going on here? Please help us check it. You know, the lights. You know, so you want to also help check your relationships to see outside of purpose, what else, you know, makes the relationship tick. Now, I'm talking about value now. So number one is purpose, number two is values. What values do you share? relationships marriage by the grace of God is a gift of God to human beings who wish to procreate the greatest pleasure of marriage is the responsibility of procreation yeah it's a very powerful pleasure the pleasure of holding your child or more is like God though I don't know how to explain it it's very powerful the pleasure of procreation are you listening to what I'm saying sir yeah. okay you know you are listening yes we'll talk after now so what is powerful about it is that God will always give you the power of meeting someone but in your meeting someone make sure that who you settle down with as a wife like I said on Sunday will give you peace, pride, passion, and purpose. Please write that down. Peace, pride, passion, and purpose. Peace. You need peace, sir. More than beauty, you need peace. You need to be in the other room and not be afraid. Do you understand what I'm saying? I told you of a couple where one sleeps in bottle. I'm not kidding you. Um, the guy comes in like, you don't know, <laughs> jackknife is meeting bottle. I'm not kidding. I'm not kidding. I, 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 and you need to see them. Both of them are elegant, tall. 
When they enter a room, you will notice them. Galats. Remember, there is no peace in that home. They left themselves now. They have to. Otherwise, one would have died. I'm telling you. I was telling them, calm down. Don't, don't be. They said, no, sir. We are very sure. The guy's name is, I don't know what to say the name. No, let me know. <laughs> let me know. That name. You know, I could have said it. The simple me can say it. I would say it. What do you want to do to me? Just to but let's just keep him for now. But what I'm just saying is that I, I remember like fire. I was telling them, chill. Just chill. No pastor, no pastor. I'm like, can you come? No, ah. Now, they can't even hear you are there, I'm here. You know that kind of... <laughs> what happened? What happened? Lack of God in a relationship can scatter everything. Let me just tell you something. Premarital sex can confuse you. A lot more than you imagine. Let me say this again. Premarital sex can confuse you a lot more than you imagine. If it is possible for you, stay away from it. And it is possible for you. Stay away from it. I want to really urge you on that. Now, quickly, having said all that much, I will say this finally. Choose the woman that has good family, family background and good home training. Home training is the capital of almost everybody. If the woman doesn't have capital of home training, you will have to teach her the thing she should have learned when she was young. I know old fish, I mean dry fish is hard to bend. So I've said that. If you have questions, keep them for Sunday. Let me quickly introduce the five laws of, relationship, of, of influence. Now, please, the reason all of this conversation has come in the first place, as I'm gradually bringing it close, is so that you can make meaning on earth. Remember I told you that you are special. Do you remember I, I, I spent some good time trying to reassure you of your importance. Why were you not created as a giraffe? Uh, who says you couldn't have been a giraffe? Just, the giraffe looking at us now, just looking, might also be looking like you, just giraffe. Imagine giraffe just going, eating leaves from roof, crossing a roof to eat leaf. You could have been a giraffe. You could have been a monkey. You could have been a baboon. You could have been a snake. <laughs> Going up and down. God said, No, I want you to be human. It's for a reason. It's for a reason, no, oh, it's for a reason. That's why I look and say, How can you look at yourself now and say you are use useless? When God calls you useful, say you are useless. So I want to draw to your attention tonight again that we are very special people, but we are here not just special for nothing, we are here to make an influence, to make an impact. The value of your life is tied to the amount of impact you make. The purpose of you making contact with anybody is to make impact with somebody. The purpose of contact with anybody is to make impact with somebody. We are people of purpose and I've written it on Twitter, I've said it here before, don't die without a purpose. Don't die without making a difference. As powerful as you are, you owe it to yourself and to people to know what you are contributing to this earth. Praise the Lord. I said praise the Lord. Now, you must understand that you are a person of influence. You are either influencing someone or someone is influencing you, but nothing remains the same. The day you meet someone, that's the day something starts to change on this earth about the equation of things. Anybody you meet, and I'm, I'm literal, just try it. Anybody you meet is a, is, is, a, is a, what do you call it now? Is a factor to a change. Now, you know that there's something they call affectation. The butterfly effect. Are you aware of these things? Now, the butterfly that flaps its wings. Woof! Woof! As f the, the whiff of a butterfly alone is capable of causing a tornado somewhere over time. Go and read it up. It's inside Wikipedia. And I'm, I'm amazed how sometimes just the little breeze that blows, the flowers that fall, the sun that shines, the movement of fuel, the this of that, what changes that occur 
are significant. Just like you are also significant. The people you meet can change a man's story. Now, I tell you a small story. There was this man who was tired of his life and he was determined that his life was useless. True story. True story. He was determined his life was useless. He had just gotten dis um, you know, disembarked from his job. He was embarrassed by his spouse. A lot of things were just not working for him. So he decided that, look, I'm going to kill myself. And guess what he did? He took up his car keys, entered his vehicle, and was driving. And said, I'm just going to take a walk. When I come back, I'm going to do this and this and this and this, and I will die. And nobody cares because I'm useless. And as he was driving, by the traffic light, as it stopped, he just looked over his left side. And a woman standing by the, you know, when you're waiting for um, pedestrians to cross over, just their eyes, you know, collided, and she just smiled. Do you understand? And the smile looked like, do I know her from somewhere? You know, when you, someone smiles at you, like, do I know her from somewhere? Who is that? Where is she? I think I used to know her. And that's how he thought about it. And as he was going, because he liked the smile. Just a smile. Everybody say smile. The woman just what? Smiled. And the guy thought it through till he drove back to his house and said, maybe I'm not bad as that after all. Everybody say smile. If a smile, an unintentional smile, can influence someone to extend his life, then I can tell you much more that when you do that which is more than a smile, you are doing more than you imagine. Somebody has more reason to leave when he can hug you. Somebody has more reason to leave because of the shoe you gave out. Somebody is planning to live longer because of that your pepper soup. Someone is planning to live longer because of your jollof rice. Amen. Oh, you don't know the effect of that jollof rice. The pleasure to the soul will make him not commit suicide. Ladies and gentlemen, if influence can be done unintentionally, like a woman smiling across the road to a man in a car, then imagine when influence is done intentionally. So the first law of influence is that influence is most effective when it is done intentionally. You must be intentional to influence people. That's what your social capital is for. Whatever area you have developed strength, it does not end on you. Every flavor that you give out deliberately to your world is an effort to make the world better. When Jesus said, let light your light so shine, what it means is that give out the flavor of your light. If what you give out is amber light, don't feel bad. Release it. There is the effect of this light, this particular combination of lights. Under the camera effect, that is exactly what we need. At the right time, at a certain time, that's exactly the color of light we need for a commercial. I'm simply saying, your light is beautiful, shine it. What you have, whatever you have developed in this couple of weeks that you have assessed yourself on, that this is who I am. From where you are, the world can listen to you. Do you know that the world listens to Michael Jordan now, not even though he's not a pastor? Michael Jordan will be given a space before the, one of, among the top people of life. You know why? He stayed in his field and capitalized on his capital. Stay in your field. Even though you are not Steve Jobs, they will put you on the same seat with Steve Jobs because you honed your field well. Be a star. Get your field right. What is your capital? What is the field that you have gotten? What is the area of life you want to be a master at? Don't be a mediocre. Decide tonight that you are going to be an expert. That little God has given to you, shine it. Can I hear your amen? amen? Don't shine it just the way you think people shine light. Find out how it can make impact. Be intentional about it. Be intentional. Life's influence is best when it is intentional. Everybody say after me, say intentional. intentional. We are simply saying, somebody is looking at you right now in this room, watching how you are behaving. That influence might not be intentional. That influence might be unintentional. But I'm saying to you tonight, take it up from there and become intentional about influencing someone. 
help someone get better help someone know life differently make a smile deliberately extend yourself live beyond yourself be intentional about it can i hear your amen? amen tonight after service don't just go away speak compliments you know that some people they never say anything right on you except everything wrong uh -uh, they've not seen you long. how come your nose is bigger sister what happened to your nose they always see what is wrong sunday morning everybody's wearing gilly they will see why is that one's gilly not blending with the shoe why are you like this why are your eyes not trained to see value in other people it's simply because you don't have value in yourself because we literally mirror what we are we don't see life the way life is we see life the way we are you must learn to see potentials and the proof of it is not that you don't just keep quiet is that you give compliments to others see what is right in the person i like your hair don't lie about it if you don't find what you like you don't necessarily have to lie say the truth praise the lord Hallelujah. this time around i'm only saying say it intentionally to influence somebody for the better give somebody a reason to live how many never say make influence intentional can you look at the neighbor like though you care tonight say make influence intentional towards the day who do you think about do you think about what you can buy as a gift where i can add value listen to me people when you are not belonging to anywhere where your value is counted your value is discounted to every other place you go to what i simply mean by that is that where you don't have go to that where your value is appreciated every other place you go to they are using your value the place where your value counts is where it counts for example what community do they respect you the most where do you belong you are not in a cult you are not in a church you are not anywhere you have to know that people celebrate those that are committed with their value some people all they will do is hold the cup for somebody else and that person is going to hold the shoe for someone else, but everybody must be valued somewhere make sure you are deliberate don't come to church go out of church nobody knows you you don't know anybody it's not right find somewhere to belong to find somewhere and make it intentional they are holding a meeting do you have anything to say you keep quiet every time you pass the ball that you keep quiet in the meeting and you don't have anything to say can i tell you the truth can i tell you the truth you just passed the power of greatness to somebody else have something to say hold an opinion don't say you are just quiet that's why they will never give you a space in the front say something start from what you know to what you don't know don't say what you don't know start from where you know something what i know is that before the end of this meeting i'll have something to say that is something to say <laughs> that is something to say that is something to say but they ask for an opinion a whole human being and you have none that's dangerous we don't need you here we don't need you here you are of no value added you are a place you are a clog in the floor of things if we must share food your budget is a waste so i'm challenging us scale up your game why will five people be talking and you don't have an opinion where is your mind where is your mind why are you so lost where is your mind no you have the mind of christ yes, sir. you have a mind use it use it the strength of your mind is dying the muscles of your intelligence are crying why are you not thinking no thinking stinking living you can't continue like that so make influence intentional have an opinion stand somewhere in thoughts let your thoughts locate you are you hearing what i'm saying yes, make influence intentional number two for you to be an influence in life you need the law of access access you cannot influence people you don't have access to can i hear your amen it is contact that makes us influence anybody that makes us make impact if i don't have access to you i cannot influence you 
If you don't have access to me, you cannot influence me. It is that access that we have to ourselves that makes influence make meaning. Therefore, if you don't know how to gain access into people's lives, you are going to have difficulty being intentional with your influence. I expect that by now somebody should be writing an article. There should be a thought. You should have a thought, an impression on something that you can document. I told you that if you are not writing something or saying something or putting something up, it only speaks of the fact that you are not inspired. You are not inspired. I can go to your status and tell how inspired you are. Now, if you don't been posting anything and I look at your status, I can tell that this person has been busy. If you've been posting before. Because she's busy. You are living a real life. Don't use it as an experiment. Too. This is real. This is not a real life. This is life. There's no another life. Too. This is the life. This age you are, you will never come back to it again. No. And in this life, it is said and it is true. You will regret only more of the things you never did than the things that you thought you were afraid of. You know? Make impacts. Let them feel your presence in the house. Some people think that you are squatting with someone because you are not talking in the house, that they, you are not a body. It's not true. That we know you are in the house alone is a body. <laughs> Have you ever been there? I don't drink their water. I don't eat their food. I don't do anything. You know? Uh, that is the pain itself. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I prefer you eat the water. I prefer you in the parlor and all of us are eating and it is we are together. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. You think because you are innocuous, you don't exist. Because you are walking in silence. Or because you buried your head that nobody saw you. No. I used to tell my brother, I used to feel that I was not a body. I just went outside. I came back inside. I, would you drink the water? That they are even conscious that you are in the house. They can't make love anywhere. Let's start with that. It's a burden. I have to factor you in. So I, I'm not stressing them. You are stressing us. You are stressing us. Go. I hope you can handle the joke. But please, I'm telling you the truth. If you're staying somewhere, let them feel your impact. Let them feel your impact. Buy spark butterfly rice and take it home. Give them. Buy juice. Let them feel that you are alive. Some of us just, I'm not stressing them. I'm not using their soap. I'm not using their water. I'm not using their, it's not, are you drinking our air? Our airspace. You are in our air. You are using our air. So do, are you listening to what I'm saying here now? To go back home, buy something, smile, bring light to your world. They don't like you. They like you. They cannot resist you. You know what I just said? They can't. The life in you is greater than the darkness in them. Bring it in. Laugh. Carry yourself light. They say angels float because they carry themselves light. You are too heavy. Problem of Nigeria on your neck. Why? Why? Why die before your time? Why can't you laugh? Everything looks serious to you. <laughs> laugh! Laugh at yourself. Start with that. By the time you finish laughing at yourself, nobody can laugh at you again. Yes, sir. Laugh at yourself. You are too serious. That's how people will open their doors to you. But you are too serious. People are careful. I don't want to say walking on eggshells with you. I don't want to say something that she will misunderstand. Almost, we like you, but we don't want to be walking around you like we are yes, tiptoeing. We are, do you understand what I'm saying? We want to talk freely. Praise God. I want to crack a joke on you and feel free. Amen. Then yeah. I'll be eyeing and say, Oh Lord, have I forget? <laughs> Lord Jesus. Lord. Oh, anymore? Anymore? Angel, let me fetch bucket of blood. Let me fetch bucket of blood. We need six buckets of blood. <laughs> <laughs> Glory to God. Yeah. 
our influence will only count when we use it deliberately to this place. Now listen to the balance. Listen to this. If you stay somewhere and the inconvenience is greater, you have tried everything, it might be God's method of sending you out of that place. You are too comfortable. So there's a balance. Praise the Lord. Can you hear what I'm trying to say here? But know this. Anywhere you have access to is the space God has given you to influence people. Anywhere. Don't let anybody meet you and remain the same after meeting. Don't let anybody meet you. If you are a lady, make an impression. You don't talk much. Use good perfumes to speak loud. You don't talk much. You don't have to wear a good shoe that they will not forget that that guy's shoe, there was something about him. You don't talk much. Use a good phone. Leave an impression. Don't let anybody meet you without making an impression. Don't let anybody catch you without making an impression. You don't have cash. Say something good about the person. Glory to God. Hallelujah. We'll stop here for tonight. Glory. I'll show you three more. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> <laughs>